morning guys. I'm at Florin Decor this morning because a lot of you guys actually suggested heading here for grout samples. I brought some tiles as well so we can see if any of the grouts look good. So let's head in. Justin's here as well. We're gonna see which grout. Um, thinking or leaning a little bit darker. So we'll see what they have. At Florin Decor, their little um, tags actually say what grout and what tile they use. But look at this grout color here. It's actually really nice. It's kind of like that muted mushroomy brown color with a little bit of gray in it. It's probably hard to see on camera. It's called cocoa. So we don't know if the charts are off, if the boxes are off, what's off. But it is just challenging to figure out which grout color. On this chart here, I'm really liking espresso, mocha, and I'm also actually really liking this auto green color which is kind of a I don't even know it's just pretty I love green so that's just an option that I'm kind of leaning towards no that'd be too green it'd be giving green that looks too dark that looks kind of pretty espresso hot cocoa oh Hot cocoa is kind of giving. <laughs> hey guys, we're gonna get the color hemp and hope for the best. Just made it over to the house from Floor and Decor and look at the floor. It is looking so good. So it has been fully curing now for probably like 48 hours, I'd say, and it is ready to be grouted. The first step that I wanna share with you what we're going to be doing is actually kind of redoing the edge of these cut tiles because as you can see, the edges of the actual tiles are a bit tumbled. They have more of a softer edge to them and the cut tiles are very harsh, very sharp, and you are going to see grout on the other side of this. So I'm going to be using a Dremel to kind of recreate the look of this edge on the cut edge. I'm using this Dremel tool and I'm gonna be using this sanding attachment here. And all I'm going to do is just touch it on top of the tile and kind of work along this piece here to create a sanded edge. <laughs> So here's the edge that I sanded, and then here it's just a straight cut edge. As you can see, this side definitely matches up more with the original tile edges. So I have a little update for you guys, and it is not one I was expecting, but I'm peeling up the tile floor. I'm not peeling up all of it, let me tell you what happened. So as you guys know, we laid the base of the tile floor out first, which um, was all in the center section, and then we had to go in and do all the cuts, which we then mortared last night. And I noticed today when I got here, I stepped on one of the edge pieces and it pulled up. And on the entire center section of this entire tile, like this area all throughout here, you guys saw in the video that we used the bag of mortar and then mixed it, you know, with the water and the drill and created our own mortar. But for these little edge pieces on that last day, we actually bought a pre-mixed tub of mortar because we only needed a little bit for the edges and I just didn't want to buy a whole nother 50 pound bag if it wasn't necessary. So we bought a little tub just to find out that in small print on the tub, it says not for use on stone tiles, which I did not see. Justin did not see it as well. And all the tiles that we added, which were all cut and added to the perimeter of the entire kitchen and breakfast nook, have to be pulled out, scraped, the floor has to be scraped and then we have to dry it back down and re-mortar them. Routing is going to be pushed off a little bit so this was not expected at all. I'm currently going through and scraping it off. Something I'll say though is that it's pretty easy to get off because it's not meant for the stone tiles so it's kind of just like easily scraping off and also easily scraping off the floor. Now that was just a humongous error on my part. I should have read the packaging better. I just assumed it would work um, and it didn't. So Justin's actually at the store right now grabbing some different mortar. That way we can at least put the pieces down and they're gonna be stuck. And I even tried like prying up one of the um, tiles that we did with the mortar that we mixed and it is impossible to get that up, you guys. I was almost breaking the actual tile itself as opposed to getting it off of the you know concrete that we cemented it to the floor with. So I'm continuing through doing all of this area. Um, which was supposed to be grouted today and I just kicked them out of place. <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> Thank you. 
For the mortaring of the tiles, I actually ended up putting the mortar inside of one of these grout bags, and you're gonna see this during the grouting process. It's actually what I used to grout the entire flooring, which is a little bit different than your traditional grouting method, but it's commonly used in masonry and stone floorings or walls. So I actually used the piping bag to lay down the mortar, and it made it so much simpler to just go across and put down all of our little cut pieces. needed to remove any extra wood or just anything interfering with our thresholds which are going to have a tile detail in them so I removed any of the wood any nails any of the subfloor and really prepared those areas in the larger archway which is over by the coffee bar I used a circular saw to cut down any extra boards because as you guys remember this archway was actually never here so the boards traveled under the previous wall so I had to remove some boards and then I used a sander to sand those down and I also used this little dremel with a tiny little circular attachment to trim away all the way up to the wall and just be careful with this it gets pretty hot pretty smoky um but it did the trick Alrighty, after about two hours we have cleared out the threshold to a perfect nice squared off section that we can add our decorative tile which is going to be in here now it's not actually decorative it's just a different shape it's like a brick shape and so it's going to be stacked in a soldier row here and i'll show you exactly what that is originally i was going to do a braided section but I don't think I'm gonna do the braided section anymore because one of the things I loved about the braided section was the actual borders on either side and having the braid in the middle. And I'm just not able to put borders on either side with the width here. So I think I would rather just do some skinnier strips in a row, which let me show you what that's gonna look like. That's gonna look something like this, but of course we'll have um, like a grout line here as well that matches. So they will kind of pop out. I used a piece of wood as a straight edge and a pencil to mark all of the cuts that we're going to want to make and then I cut those on the tile saw off camera. We laid down a whole bunch of mortar in that opening there and then actually pressed down to ensure that the bottom of the tile was flush with the wood floor and the top was flush with the tile above because I did actually tile over the top of the mortar so this is actually about a quarter inch higher than the wood floor but with the rise that we created you cannot tell at all and it took a good eight hours to finish tiling up the space so I spent Sunday at the flea market instead of grouting and here's how it went. Good morning everyone, I'm here with Justin. We're going to the Rose Bowl Flea. It's Rose Bowl Flea Market Day, it happens once a month, so of course we had to make our way. Uh, it is currently about 9.30 and we are going to see what we can find today. Now, what are you in the lookout for, Justin? Anything for your home? A runner, maybe, for my yeah. front entry? I'm looking for a runner, too. I'm looking for a runner for the kitchen. Two runners, in particular. And chairs, but I'm not keeping my hopes up. I need a circle table. I need, like, a circular little table for the breakfast nook. I found a perfect one, but the lady won't message me back. Oh, well, that's rude. Probably some decor as well. We are about to pull in to the parking lot right now, so I will catch up with you guys when we get inside. <laughs> Some cute items, like this little trunk. Oh my gosh, a horseshoe. Oh, it's like a lounger for outside. Yeah, it's a lounge chair. Love this candle holder. I've seen these online um, and I've always wanted to find one. I'm gonna see how much this is. We've made it to rugs. Now we're looking for more runners, so more like a, these around the edges. Wait, what did you just tell him? He's my biggest, my, my biggest YouTuber that I know of. <laughs> yes, he is. He's awesome. <laughs> and y'all better like and subscribe. Period. <laughs> it's the block right down the street from Fiddum. Oh, the where's the block? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. What's, right what, what do you sell there? I found some items, guys. Look how cool this candle snuffer is. It's like super large. I've never seen one this big. Um, the bowl and then another juicer. I just love this ceramic juicer. I think I might add um, one of them to the shop. Wait, guys, I found these. I have to have these little tiny cups. They're almost like little shot glasses. Serving a shot in this. 
This is going quite a bit better than last trip, I will say. You guys, look at this brass sink. What's the texture? I'm gonna lift it up. Oh, it's is it a so or is it cool. Just textured? It's just textured. Oh, that's cool. That is so cool. Always make sure to remove the covers of books and look at the spine because I swear they look so much better. It might match your style too a little bit more. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can get some of these books because some of these are really great. Oh my gosh, these ones. Got these books. <laughs> what I found again. A laughing pig, but there's a set this time. I gotta show you guys this vase I just picked up. How cool and interesting is this? It almost has this like checkerboard. Well, every side's different. This one has almost like a Harlequin. Then we have kind of a checkerboard square. Then we have something else on the back. And then we have this. So you can choose which side you're feeling for the day and display that. But I just loved the kind of graphic look of it and the color. This tree is so majestic. I just love her. But I'm such a Libra that it has to be four. I'm like two. <laughs> <laughs> are these are the smallest coasters in my entire life. Colored glass, so pretty. You guys look at these glasses. It's like glass, but it's almost like they like carved the glass, like after it was and they're so heavy, but they have this like amber tone to them. They're like brown smoky. <laughs> Imagine a nice little cocktail in this. I can show you Krispies. Um, has this, like, when it misses, but it's a. I'm so touched that Drew is is buying for me. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you. Look how good this is. Wait, do you have a? Do you have a, Do you sell online or anything? Or no, no, and people buy for me in this house. Oh, I can imagine. Look how cool this is. It is a metal bouquet of mums. Like, imagine this in a vase on a shelf or something. I think that is so unique. Honestly, yeah. This is really nice, too. Justin just made a purchase. Justin, what did he get? These columns. He got these large columns. That are so freaking cool. They were a hundred dollars for the set, you guys. And the guy was gonna say like a thousand, and the guy was like a hundred. And Justin was like, "Are you joking?" And he was like, "Nope, you can have them for a hundred. So he got them. Here's Justin and his long pole. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was thinking these for the living room on either side of the archway. The car is officially lost. We cannot find the car anywhere. We've been looking for mm, 20 minutes. And I don't have a clicker to do the alarm. He doesn't have a clicker to do the alarm and we also, neither of us even considered looking <laughs> where we parked when we <laughs> drove in here. So we can't find it. <laughs> we found the car. It only took 41 minutes. And look at these wallpapers. These are all hand painted, yeah? Yes. So this one's called Cano Garden. The inspiration was actually an 18th century Japanese screen. I love Japanese screens as wall art. It's so and pretty. And it had all of these design elements and I instantly realized it would be a perfect wallpaper. So we actually make this entire background with the gold leaf and then we paint over this oatmeal-y color and paint all the design. It's so cool. There's like so much to look at. My brother and I used to do that when we were little. When we yeah. were at dinner, we would count butterflies. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I would do too. I would love that. different every time. <laughs> so then there are other metallic backgrounds that don't have the squares. That is so pretty. It's sort of a, a brighter silver. This is one of our non-antique designs. Wow. A lot of designs have a sanding and glazing. Uh-huh. If you guys remember or have seen the show Homework, they actually did this wallpaper in Kit's room in the nursery. It looked so good. Justin was on the show as well. It's so pretty. Yes, they did like a pink background, I remember. Stored antique wallpaper. It is so, so pretty. Thank you. This actually is like Kit's 
design. Oh yeah. But we did yeah. not pick for her. Oh, but yeah. this is the design that Candace and Andy really, really love for kids' rooms. was able to bring in my flea market finds from Justin's truck this morning. We weren't able to over the past couple days because it has been pouring rain in Los Angeles. Like we've been creating rivers and lakes all over Los Angeles. And so we just didn't want to bring in the items, but I finally brought them this morning. It's a little sunny outside, which is actually quite nice. And I wanted to share with you guys some of the items I got because I actually am going to be doing a vintage drop on LoneFox.com probably within the next couple of months or so. I've been collecting and curating a little collection of vintage goods that are going to be like one of a kind, very unique curated pieces that I'm so excited about. It's just going to be a little addition to the online shop because I'm already out thrifting, antiquing, just shopping for home decor and vintage goods all the time. So I figure, you know, if I find something and I feel like maybe one of you guys might like it or I could post it online, sometimes I just cannot let something I know one of you guys might like just sit there. So I figured I might as well have a page on the site and offer up some vintage and antique goods. So I wanted to kind of share with you guys some of the items I'm going to be keeping for myself and then some of the items that might be going in the shop. So I have been having a obsession with studio pottery lately. Something about these individual handmade pieces I just love. Like look how cool this jar is that's handmade with the lid. I love how the lid is attached as well or I guess the handle on the lid. This is a little bowl, a studio pottery bowl and then I found this vase here. Look how cute this teapot is. Like when I found this I was freaking out and the top actually comes off like you can actually use it as a little teapot. I also got the little amber glasses. I had to pick those up and I love this juicer. How cute is this studio pottery juicer? This candle holder, this stoneware, just handmade candle holder. How beautiful is that? I think this one might be, oh no, this one's not signed. There are some pieces though that are actually signed. I think that is so unique. I just love that. And here's a little mug. I also got those glasses that you guys saw and look how cool these are, these goblets. Oh, the guy said that he actually got these at a ceramic artist's estate sale and then I also found mugs that matched, which I loved. But that is a good majority of the items that I picked up at the flea market, which I think I did a pretty good job. Like, I'm also very, very excited that I'm going to be offering some of them to you guys, of course, um, in the vintage drop, which I'll give you guys more info on that in the future. But if you do absolutely want to make sure that you could shop the vintage drop, I do just suggest going over to the Lone Fox website and entering your email just because we send out a bunch of email notifications and newsletters. Well, not a bunch. We're not going to overwhelm your inbox, but that's a great way how you guys are going to be notified of when the drop is happening and how you could shop it. And I'll probably also give early access to email subscribers as well. So that's a really great perk. But today is grouting day. We are starting the grout. I came over here this morning. We unloaded the items. We're going to start the grout, heading upstairs to start mixing that up and get it on the floor, which is hopefully going to be this Sunday's video. So I will catch you guys in my next one. And I hope that you enjoyed this one. Bye.